Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Inspiring Tastes. Today we are doing something a little bit different and I am doing a road trip edition. Nothing that I love more than putting on my favorite musical theater playlist and doing long drives to see the sights around the country. So I thought I would show you how to make a few different snacks that you can make ahead of time using a lot of non-perishable ingredients so that way they can last on your journey without refrigeration or anything like that. So let's get started. First thing that we're gonna make is some crispy toasted chickpeas. So I've got my oven preheating behind me at 170 degrees. All we're gonna do is get some chickpeas. I have rinsed and drained them from the can and then dried them really well. The drier you have them before you put them in the oven, the crispier they will be. To this, all we're gonna do is add some spices and some oil. So I've got some oil, some paprika, garlic powder, cumin and salt. And then I'm just gonna give this a good coating and a toss in the bowl and then pop them in the oven for an hour. You wanna make sure that when you pop them on your baking tray that they are all flat and evenly spaced out so that way they can all cook really evenly and get nice and crispy. Alrighty, perfect. So they are going into the oven now. I'm just gonna give them a shake about halfway through and then we're gonna move on to the next dish. Okay, next up we've got some delicious, and I'm sorry in advance saying this, moist brownies that I'm gonna show you how to make with a bit of a twist. So these are gonna be black bean brownies. The reason I like making these is one, it's a really good way to use up some of your non-perishables that you've got, so chickpeas, black beans, um, coconut if you've got it in the cupboard. And they stay, again, moist for quite a long time because there is no flour in the recipe. So it is also gluten free. So if you are gluten intolerant, bonus for you. So what I'm gonna do first is just get some dark chocolate and melt that down with some coconut oil. Then I'm gonna put a few things in the food processor. Alrighty, now that the chocolate and coconut oil has all melted down and is nice and smooth, I'm gonna start putting some things into my food processor. So to start off, I've got some walnuts, some canned chickpeas that I've just rinsed and drained as well, black beans, some desiccated coconut, cocoa powder, and a little bit of vanilla to go in as well. And all I'm gonna do is process this now until it sort of becomes a paste. And then once we get it to that point, I'm gonna slowly start to add in our chocolate and coconut oil mixture, and then we will move on. That's what you're looking for. It kind of looks almost like a thick brownie batter already, but we still have a few more ingredients to add into this. Also, I promise you that these are just as good as regular brownies. So don't freak out because they're made out of beans. I'm not trying to convince anyone to go on a health kick. It's just a bit of an added bonus that um, they use a lot of whole raw ingredients. So lastly, I've just got three eggs here that I'm gonna whisk up and then add in some maple syrup. Gonna fold that into our brownie batter and then throw in a couple of mix-ins and then we are done. All right, our egg and maple syrup is combined. So now I'm just gonna pour that into our brownie butter and give it a good mix. Alrighty, now time for the mix-ins. So I've just got some more walnuts here that I've roughly chopped that I'm gonna add in. 
and I've got some chocolate chips, of course. Now, what I like to do as well, and this goes for any baked good where you're adding something into it that's heavy, then the batter, heavier than the batter, is add a little bit of plain flour to it, give it a good mix, and then add it into the batter. This will stop it from sinking to the bottom when it bakes, so that way you'll have an even distribution of all your mixins into the brownie. And I realized that that was really counterproductive for anyone that is gluten-free and you do want to keep them gluten-free. Just don't do that step. Alrighty, now I've just got here a square baked tin that I've lined with a bit of baking paper. A really good hack that you can do for anything where you want to get the baking paper right into the corners is actually trim on a little diagonal in each of the corners. That way any excess can actually overlap behind and it'll go right into the edges. So you don't have to have, worry about having annoying corner bits of baking paper. So I'm just gonna pour this in, top it with a few more chocolate chips, and then this will go into the oven for half an hour. Alrighty, so next up we've got some coconut macaroons. So in a large bowl I've just got some desiccated coconut to which I'm going to add in a can of condensed milk. And some vanilla. I'm just going to give this a good stir, set it aside and then we're going to beat up some egg whites. So I've just got two egg whites here that I'm going to put into my stand mixer, put it onto a high speed and get them to um, soft peaks and then I'm just going to fold that into our coconut mixture. Okay, now I'm going to do is just get a couple of, a big spoonful I should say, of the coconut mixture and just form it into a slight ball and pop it onto a baking sheet line with some baking paper. I have also adjusted my oven temperature now that the chickpeas and the brownies are out of the oven. So I've just dropped it down to 140 to pop these in. So these are gonna go into the oven now for about 25 minutes. Just keep an eye on them halfway through. If you need to rotate the trays, move one up, move one down, or back to front, make sure you do that so they don't cook unevenly. And then we've only got one more thing to prep up. Alrighty, on the home stretch. So the last thing that we're gonna to put together is just some delicious peanut butter muesli bars. All I've done here is in a bowl, I've got some oats, sunflower seeds, pepitas and almonds that I've just popped into the oven to roast for about 15 minutes to get nice and toasty and golden. What I'm gonna do now is in a bowl just combine some peanut butter, coconut oil and maple syrup and just zap that in the microwave for about a minute, 30 seconds at a time and then mix it all together so that the peanut butter is a little bit more liquidy so that way it will evenly stir through the oat mixture. That is all nice and smooth so I'm just going to pour that into our oats and nuts. And I've also got here some puffed rice so I'm going to toss that in as well because I like the texture that it adds to the muesli bars. And the last thing that I'm gonna add in is just some dried apple and chocolate chips. I've gone for dried apple as the fruit um, for these muesli bars, just cause I think apple and peanut butter go really well together. You can add in whatever you like. There's no real science behind this, so go crazy. So now that everything has been mixed up, you do wanna press it into a baking pan. Again, I've lined it with some baking paper and you wanna Press it down as firmly as possible, just so that way once they have set up and you do cut them, they don't crumble and fall apart. Now that I've done that, I'm just going to stick it into the fridge for about an hour to completely set and then I will slice it up. 
And there you have it. These are my top four road trip snacks that you can make ahead of time and they will store for about four to five days in an airtight container and you don't have to worry about refrigeration or anything like that while you're on the road. Hope you've enjoyed this video. I'd love to know in the comments below what kind of music you like to listen to on your road trips or if you're a podcast person, let me know and I will see you all next week with another video.